This video is rated B for you'd better back on out of here if you don't want spoilers, buddy. Garlemald is still in grave danger. Welcome back, my friends. And the thing you may be asking at the moment is, how on earth is Garlemald still in danger after everything that's happened in the Endwalker campaign? The Warrior of Light and the Ilsebar contingent successfully liberated what surviving Garleans there were from the Hold of Anima. The Talafroi were dealt with. Any remaining claims to the throne of Garlemald are essentially gone, and the more peaceful days of the Garlean Republic are starting to show themselves once again. So, with the help of the Ilsebar contingent, the Warrior of Light, Scions, and a steady recuperation of their political structure, how could they still be in danger? Well, my friends, today we're going to discuss that, and I'm going to use all lore available at the moment to remind everyone that Garlemald's current political position is not nearly as stable as the MSQ wants you to believe. I'll start at the beginning, which is essentially the crux of why I decided to make this video in the first place. After the MSQ story of 6.55 and learning that one of the claimants of the Throne of Tyrol plans on invading Garlemald, I received a few unique questions asking, why in the world would anyone do this? This is a country that is just starting to get back on its feet, a people that can barely defend themselves. What honor is there in laying claim to the lives of those who can barely look after themselves right now? And the answer is very simple. This isn't about honor. It's about heroics. For the majority of Endwalker's campaign, both base and post story, we can say that the MSQ has gone way out of its way to paint Garlemald and the Garleans as the victims of circumstance, as the individuals who weren't entirely responsible for their choices and their decisions. And why is that? Well, it's because ultimately, Emmet Selk, who crowned himself as Emperor of Garlemald, was the one pushing the city-state towards conquest, world domination, etc. So it could be argued that the only reason Garlemald started what it did was because of direct Assian involvement. Thusly, this would mean that a majority of their actions throughout the campaigning wars in the past few decades are not entirely on them. In fact, many people seem to forget just how many individuals that Emmet Selk willfully led astray, lied to, tortured, and killed in order to get what he wants. Make no mistake, as a villain in Shadowbringers, Emmet Selk was definitely the bad guy, and definitely needed to be stopped. Otherwise, his campaign for bloodshed would have continued ad nauseum. Of course, that's how we, the players, see Garlemald's situation. The Scions know this, and willfully admit that it is mostly the Assians' fault that all these things were happening in the first place. And of course, to that end, characters like Alfino and Alize have done nothing but try to improve the living conditions of Garlemald for its people, for the surviving Garleans that were able to make it past not only the final days, but their own social collapse. To many of us, this is a good thing. This is a group of people that have been led astray and are now being given a chance to try again. However, what the MSQ completely fails to remind everyone is that the amount of people helping Garlemald at the moment is a fraction of a percent. It's only briefly elaborated on in the story, but the amount of people that came to assist with the Ilsebar contingent to help save Garlemald was not as many people as you assume. In fact, many of the individuals that came to help were volunteers. If I was to compare the strength of the Ilsebar contingent to the complete standing military might of all the countries involved, you would notice that the Ilsebar contingent is remarkably weak. But why is that? Well, I believe Lise put it best. Within the cutscene that she's explaining the situation regarding the Ilsebar contingent, she says that for every one person that answered the call, a dozen said no. 
Now, of course, my friends, I am under no delusion. I don't think that what she gave us is a proper measurable metric. Likely, it's just a number off the top of her head and could very well be hyperbolic. But if we want to entertain ourselves for a moment, let us imagine, just for a split second, that she was not lying and that what she was saying was no exaggeration. For every one person who answered the call, a dozen refused. That would mean that throughout the entirety of Aldenard, Othard, and the remaining city-states of Ilsebard, less than 10% of all of those combined forces assisted with the reparations of Garlemald. Less than 10%. That is not an insignificant number. And honestly, from a historical point of view, it makes sense. Garlemald has done nothing but cause war, destruction, and pain for many countries for the past 60 to 70 years. The amount of blood on their country's hands is soaked, and a lot of people will not be afraid to remind them of that. Whether or not you believe Emmet Selk is the ultimate reason behind all of this, or that Garlemald essentially has to take responsibility for their own choices at some point, either way, a lot of people died because of Garlean invasion. A lot of places were destroyed because of Garlean invasion. The city of Rabinaster was obliterated for trying to rebel against Garlean rule. So it should come as no surprise that most Dalmascans would not shed a tear if someone suddenly invaded and killed the remaining Garleans. In fact, after everything I just said, I would posit this question to you. Do you really think that most people would stop someone from invading Garlemald right now if they really wanted to? In fact, I would take that one step further. Don't you believe that the individual who chooses to invade and slay a weakened Garlemald, wouldn't he be considered a hero to thousands of people. Realistically, no amount of speech from any of the leaders of the city-states we know, or anyone like Alfino or Alize, is going to completely undo 60 years of bloodshed and war. If the gross majority of every population in every city-state still hates Garlemald, that's not something that the leaders of every country can simply undo with a snap of their fingers. Well, not without mass rioting in response, most likely. And that, my friends, is my response to the question as to why would someone invade Garlemald right now? The simple answer is that most people within the continents of Ilsebard, Othard, and Aldenard still despise them. Like I said, the MSQ has done an amazing job at showing Garlemald's progress within Garlemald, but we've only really seen their political stance through the rose-colored glasses of, say, Alfino and Alize. We have not really been exposed to just how many people would love nothing more than to see this fledgling, rebuilding nation absolutely wiped off the map. And I do recall someone saying, but what about the trade agreement between them and Thavnir? Well, the Garleans did not invade Thavnir originally because, well, Razat Han was, and still is, the biggest trading hub of the three great continents. So to conquer Razat Han would have been to deny themselves access to trade routes that this country had already created. Trade routes that the Garlean Empire was more than happy to make use of during their global campaign. Thavnir was in a unique position to forgive and forget rather quickly because they never really suffered under the Garlean thumb, so to say. But if you were to ask locations like Bosia, whose capital was obliterated by the Meteor Project, or people who still look outside their windows in Doma and notice all sorts of Garlean contraptions littered around their land, if they are okay with Garlean survivors, well, I think that you would be shocked to hear that most people are still furious. And what would those furious people do if not cheer for a champion of Tural to invade and slay the monster that had caused 60 years of nightmares. 
Now, of course, I feel like I have to reiterate, this is not me supporting the idea of Garlemald being completely wiped out. I am simply trying to remind everyone that their political position in, like, world affairs at the moment is still far from ideal. In fact, if you were to take a census from the Three Great Continents, I guarantee you most individuals would call for Garlemald's head. Now, will this actually be a story beat within Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail? Uh, who's to say? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I will say this, I would be shocked if the writers for Final Fantasy XIV completely abandoned the reality that most people still hate Garlemald. Despite all the progress of the twins, despite the support of the Ilsebar contingent, 60 to 70 years of hostile invasion and genocide, I would be confused if all of that suddenly was brushed under the rug, personally. It will certainly be something to think about on our wait for Dawn Trail, that's for sure. But what do you think, my friends? Now that I've spent time reminding everyone about the current political climate that Garlemald must face in the future, do you think that people en masse are going to forgive them? and ignore the travesties of the past because of ASEAN involvement? Or do you think that most individuals, regardless of being manipulated by Emmet Selk, are going to blame Garlemald for losing their family, friends, and homes to invasion? But, as always, I have been the Synodic Scribe, and I hope to see you again very soon. And until that day comes, stay safe, my friends. Thank you all for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and share this with your fellow adventurers? With your help, I'll try to reach out even further and bring even greater stories to you. Although, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my biggest contributors. A grand thank you to Amina Viltaria, Slippers, Potato, Sage Mouse, Sinalv Bagel, Cezani, and Travon Shea, with an additional nod to the scholarships on screen. Links to things like my Twitter and that of my channel artist Caddy can be found in the description. Thank you all for your viewership, as well as your support, and I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Class dismissed.